looks like some hooker, are you? I mean, sex, the sex isn't good, but it's fast. And all things considered, the pay scale isn't bad. 50 bucks for under 10 minutes work. 300 an hour, shit girl, the attorney's wages. Stop it, we don't need money that bad. I'll get off the rag and we'll go back to stripping. Yeah. Wait a New York minute. These are children's books? Oh, this is, oh, this is so bad. Hello friends, welcome to Look and Live. You are now here with Pastor James Devalon. And this is The Perspective. Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna share just about two mothers who began to speak about children's books. And I could not believe what I was hearing coming from them. Like I've said, this is going to trigger some of you. If it does, I'm sorry in advance. But boy, something got to be done because these superintendents, teachers, administrators, schoolmasters, there has to be a level of accountability or somebody needs to get fired or a change must come by any means necessary because this stuff is wild. You will see what I mean, friends. Let's turn over to our screen here. But before we do that, make sure you give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the page, click the bell icon for more. We're going to go through two videos today, and we're going to listen to some mothers giving their perspective. I'll be quiet in the meantime, and I'll come back to share my perspective as well. All right, without further ado, let us now get into the heart of the message. I'm going to follow what Sid said. I am like, uh, I'm speechless, to be completely honest with you. I'm in I'm embarrassed to know that there's books like this in our school library that are available to 13, 14, to 18, 19 year olds that the committee deems is appropriate for them to sit in the library and read, but require a parent approval to check it out, to read at another location outside of the library. Like logically, that just does not make sense to me whatsoever. And I will be putting in a formal um, request due to a, a book objection that the committee made on something that I, I objected to, a book I objected to. But um, one of the things that I, I don't understand is how we can um, have a book called Tricks in the library that deals with subject matter about freedom, safety, community, family, love, that all wrap around sex, pornography, uh, getting prostitution. Like, don't we want kids to be reading things that talk about how they work towards adulting in the bravery section, or problem solving, or, you know, adventure, and, 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 and help, you know, have books available that are fiction, that do those types of things. Like, why are we talking about very adult topics in a very small percentage of the world and trying to normalize it for these <coughs> kids? They're kids. They shouldn't be making leaps of faith and falling down and growing up trying to figure out sex and love as a kid. They should be trying to figure out what they want to do as an occupation where their faith and friendships come in. How are they gonna work with people in the job world? How are we preparing them for that? Why would we have books available to them that talk about that type of sex, pornography? The school, doesn't the school board, uh, the school state code state that these books are not supposed to be available to kids? It's illegal to have these types of pornography materials available to kids. 30 seconds. I, I, it's just disgusting. And I really would like you guys to consider the ramifications long term of having our kids exposed to these materials. I mean, Ill, it's just illogic that they can sit in the library and read it, but they have to have a parent signature to check it out and take it home and read it there. Th those two things just don't make any sense in my mind. Thank you. Two people on that committee uh, are up here on this on the committee that voted to um, keep those books in the library, including our superintendent. 
just think about that. Yep, disturbing to say the least. That's the first video. We got another one coming. Listen, friends. These children are allowed to read the book in the library. But if they were to check it out, they need a parent to sign them. <laughs> make it make sense, somebody. Now, listen, this is what I mean, friends. There has to be an agenda. What else do you want me to think? What else do you want me to think? Come on now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, these public schools, and even some of them are private schools, and I'll go as far as to say some Christian schools, they have become indoctrination camps. And friends, we need to save our children from them. We need to save our children from them. I'm telling you. All right, so that's number one. There goes another mother. Another mother. Ah, now, this one goes hard. Okay, brace yourself because she's going in. Okay. Um, so, we have, there have been parents who have done official book challenges of four different books that are in the library. There's more to come, but so far we've done four. Um, only one of the four was actually recommended by the committee to be removed. That was Fun Home. Uh, the other three have all been rejected. Uh, however, all three of them have added that there's now a new per parent permission slip that's required. However, I think it's important everybody understands that all these books are still freely available to kids when they're in the library. So for some reason, the committee looked at the books and said, okay, there is a reason for some of these kids to need parent permission before they checked them out. However, all of those books are still freely available to every child in the high school without parent permission. So according to the board policies, I think it's important for all of us to understand that this mysterious committee, this faceless, nameless committee, consists of one or more professional staff members, one or more board members, one or more lay persons knowledgeable in the area, um, and then the superintendent, Brian Gearbaugh, is an ex-officio member of all of these committees. Um, Brian Gearbaugh was asked by a parent who was on the committees for all of these book challenges. His response was, at this point, due to the manner in which individuals in the district are being treated over this matter, I do not intend to share the names of the individual committee members. The process has followed the board policy. So, I think it's important for the whole community to understand that when the, community, when the committee comes back and says, we don't recommend this book be removed, that board right there that we've elected doesn't have to do a public vote or a public discussion on each of these books. So that means that this faceless, nameless group of people that none of us can hold accountable for this decision gets to tell us that these books need to remain in the library and none of us know who to, be, who to hold responsible for that because we can't be trusted. So we've already shared excerpts from the book Push. Um, Jamie McElvaney has shared them several times. Actually, if you go to the meeting right before this on YouTube, you can watch her reading a lot of those excerpts. Um, so. That challenge, again, was denied. Push is being kept into the library and they're adding a parent permission slip. So we've decided tonight that we're gonna actually read for the community what's involved in one of the books that was also denied and is going to stay in the library, which is called Tricks. 30 seconds. Great. You're not turning tricks like some hooker, are you? I mean, sex, the sex isn't good, but it's fast. And all things considered, the pay scale isn't bad. 50 bucks for under 10 minutes work. 300 an hour? Shit, girl, the attorney's wages. Stop it, we don't need money that bad. I'll get off the rag and we'll go what? back to stripping. Yeah, money sucks. You can't live without it. What in the world am I listening to? This is crazy. This is crazy. I'm paying my way through UNLV with a little sex on the side. I mean, if you're going to have sex anyway, why not earn a little extra cash, you know? She took a big drag. You're interested in a little pay to action? I can introduce you to Lydia if you want. Sex for money. I still hadn't considered the possibility of it, meaning having sex with men. Hmm. How much for head? The we don't expired. do head, the except on each other, and that will cost an extra hundred. Thank you. That's what this committee decided to keep in our high school. We'll keep going, though. President Sislow, can I respond to the comment? Yes. And the people that are sitting there saying that these books can corrupt their children 
are the ones making our victims feel so ashamed. Oh, listen to that remark. Oh, my Lord. The stupidity and arrogance of this woman. Mm, no, she did not. Parents are sharing their concern about the ways you're indoctrinating their children with these sexual, you sexualizing them, perverting them, grooming them, you're turning them into prostitutes. They're sharing their concerns because they've entrusted you with their children. Your remark was, oh, you're making people feel ashamed. What? Uh, I'm telling you. See, this is why, friends, we don't, we don't play with this public school system. The public school system, it, it's, just, it's corrupt. It's always been corrupted. But things have gotten worse. Lord have mercy. Listen to her remark again. This woman. President Cislo, can I respond to the comment? Yes. And the people that are sitting there saying that these books can corrupt their children are the ones making our victims feel so ashamed. How dare you say that? Okay. How dare you? Hey. Excuse me. How dare this woman to say something like that? So you don't care about the kids, but you care about an ideology. Victim. You see, the problem is this victim mindset, that self-pity concept, is what is being used as an excuse to indoctrinate and sexualize children. You see, these people, these half big intellectuals, they just need to be fired. But who's going to do it? They are protected as a committee. They are sitting there. You can't get rid of them. I'm telling you, your best bet is to remove your children from their care. Order, may, order, um, order. miss of my comments. Ex order. No, excuse me. Order. These are my comments. Mr. Cicillo, I move to adjourn the meeting until it's called to order. Well, we're, we're moved. I have a motion. This is crazy. You see, this is the kind of remarks that you make that will get some parents really pissed off. This stuff right here, it will get a... Listen, that could get some people hurt because you don't do this to somebody's children and then turn around and make a comment so senseless, so cold, in the name of protecting victim while you're corrupting children. Shame on you. This is what these people are doing. I'm telling you. You see, the thing is, I'm not sure if you ever watched Uncle Tom too. There was a comment made by the, the pastor. I think his, his name is uh, Bukam or Be Beckham. One of the things he said was, many people think that the public school was government-run school was about education. No. The goal was to remove God from the hearts of our children. The goal was to cancel God. Now pay attention. You get rid of God. You get rid of morality. You get rid of authority. Right? So you place your children in these public schools where God is not in there. The scripture has been done away with. No more prayer. No more morality. Therefore, the door is left wide open for these books to make their ways in the public school system, in their libraries, to be read by children while in school, but they cannot take them home. They, they can see it, read it, and sit there and enjoy it in the public, in the school library. But if they dare to take it home, they need a parent's approval. <laughs> Oh, you've done, you've been exposed. But again, it doesn't shock me. That's why we, we keep our children away from this stuff, man. We work extra and pay for their schools. Uh, listen, we try to keep them away. It doesn't necessarily mean Christian schools is the answer to everything. 
Homeschool definitely is number one if you can afford it, if it's possible for you. Christian school, I'm telling you, I've seen parents who've gone on serious debts because they wanted to make sure their children do not go to those public schools lest they become indoctrinated. Some of them are in debts for the rest of their lives because they said, no, I will not lose my son. These people are corrupt. They will destroy our children. I would rather go in debts for the rest of my life and pay on a monthly basis to free my sons and daughters. I know what they're doing to, their ch to my children. That's guts. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. And I'm just, I'm not saying this is for everyone. You're going to have to work with this however you can, but I'll say this much. I got two messages that I'm going to share right now. Um, one is coming from the book of Luke. Uh, and then secondly, we are going to move over uh, from the book of Luke. And then we're going to transition to the book of Isaiah. And then we're ending this video. So hang tight with me here, friends. I got two scriptures you need to pay attention to. Number one, this is what we are told. Jesus said, then said he unto his disciples, it is impossible that offense will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It is better for him that a millstone were hung, were hanged about his neck, he cast into the sea, that he should offend one of these little ones. Now, particularly, contextually, this is addressing new believers. But this could also mean anyone who is innocent in their belief system. Secondarily, so what you have here, you can place children in this text. Jesus doesn't play around. There is judgment coming from these people, and they need to be reminded of that. They may think, okay, we do know what we think. Listen, there is a higher power. There is God you're going to have to answer to at the end of your day. Now, you can say whatever you want to say today and get away with it, and you are protected in whatever by the government and by the school system, and you being paid doing it. But I'm here to say, if you happen to be in, the, in these schools and you know this is going on, you better raise a voice of protest. You better raise a voice of protest against that. If not, I'm telling you, this is going to bite you at the end of time. If any teacher is watching this channel right now. And secondly, I want to say this. This is coming from the book of Isaiah. Now, we're going to go to like Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54. Look at this, friends. Listen to this. Listen to this. It says, All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Great peace shall be. Great shall be the peace of thy children. Now, according to this verse, who is to be the primary teacher of our children? The Lord, the Lord, right? So God should be the one teaching our children. And when God teaches our children, what will they have in their hearts? They shall have the peace. Great shall be the peace of thy children. So according to the word of God, when we allow God to teach our children, God will flood their hearts with peace. Because they're going to know the truth and the truth will set them free and they will have the peace of God which passes all understanding. The world wants to destroy our children. Friends, I'm here to tell you, you need to save them. Save them from the corruption of this world. They're trying to indoctrinate them. They want to take them from your hands. And I'm here to say, friends, you got to fight back against this. This is an agenda to destroy the minds of your youngs. Those mama bear, those God-fearing fathers, it's time for us to stand firm for our home and stop playing games with these people. They ain't going to change. All right? Take them from this public school. If you can afford it, put them in a Christian school, a God-fearing school, a private school. Even if it costs you something, pray to God to provide. Put them there. Trust the Lord. And teach them at home the truth of God's word and also put them in a school where you know with all confidence the curriculum is correct and they are not trying to indoctrinate your children. And if that is happening, my dear friends, you are safe. And your kids will thank you in the end.
Thank you so much for listening. Once again, my name is Pastor James Devalon. Thank you for checking out this video, friends. Once again, happy holidays. Happy holidays. And I'm hoping all is well with you. God bless you and I love you. Until next time, remember to look unto Jesus and to live by faith. Have a good one. Bye.